and I got the MDR TB in 2011. So yeah, that moment the stigma and discrimination still high. Uh, when uh, I I go to the specialist, uh, it's like shopping because one doctor said that I get uh, allergic on the air. So if I want to uh, get cure, I have to go to the to New Zealand because uh, there the, the air is more fresh. And uh, I go to another doctor again. And the doctor say that I, uh, I already have my x-ray chest and the x-ray say that uh, I will get the TB in the safe, sensitive cases. But when uh, I checked my sputum twice, uh, the sputum said that I'm negative. But uh, when I go to the doctor, uh, the doctor said that I get the TB. So yeah, uh, they give me the medicine, the TB medicine, but uh, did not adequate. So they only give me on, uh, one a day. So they, uh, we know that TB medicine have to uh, know that according to the weight, isn't it? So yeah, uh, after two months, I drink the medicine, I cut off blood. So uh, that moment and uh, the doctor uh, give me injection and then uh, whenever I got blood, the, the doctor gave me injection. So that moment I feel that I drink the medicine, but I did not cure. So yeah, that moment I changed another to another doctor again. And the last doctor uh, gave me advice to uh, check my sputum. And that moment we don't have the gen expert yet. So we have to wait, the result is uh, about three months. So after three months, uh, I got the, the result that I am uh, positive of MTRTB. So yeah, that moment uh, is hard because uh, the treatment is long, two years, and also still have the injection every day. We did not have a day off. And that moment I get the injection for six months. And yeah, it's really painful because uh, the side effect, every time I got Nusi for meeting and then pain through my bones. And um, that moment I start treatment in 11 November. 2011 and in February 2012, uh, I found myself pregnant. So yeah, the doctor said that uh, I can't uh, get rid of, get rid of uh, my baby because I still on treatment. And uh, another doctor said that I can continue to uh, with the baby and I I choose that moment to continue because uh, when we get the, what you call, uh, the check with the lab, uh, the baby is fine. So uh, the they changed my regimen. So I have to get used again to another uh, regimen of MDRTB because uh, uh, before I pregnant, I get the canamycin, and the doctor said that the canamycin for the injection cannot uh, cannot bear with the baby, so they changed my regimen to streptomycin that moment. And uh, a few, I think, two of my drug get rid of because uh, where whatever I uh, swallow is always throw up. So uh, I forgot, I think I, I get uh, 15 pills every day. And because I am pregnant, I get, they get rough of uh, like uh, 609 
until I, I deliver nine pill every day with the injection. Yes, for sure that the hard thing because you know the three semester of my pregnancy, everybody uh, get vomiting also. So it's like one package between the three semester of pregnant and also the side effect of medication. So it's like uh, I have to through it until uh, I deliver for eight months because uh, my water broke that moment. So I have to get the Caesar surgery. And uh, yeah, because, you know, I, I deliver on 2012, September. That moment, uh, the treatment of MDRTB is still not like today. So the stigma and discrimination, even though from the doctor, is still increasing. So when they uh, take me to the what you call surgery room, uh, it's like the doctor is afraid to uh, close with me be just because I'm MDRTB. They did not uh, see my medical record that I already uh converted a negative in the first month i get the treatment and that moment i already uh drink the medicine for the nine maybe ten months so yeah if uh if we know now that tb if you get treated well uh two weeks after you uh treatment it will not infect it to anybody so after that, yeah, they did not uh, put me in the maternal room. They, they put me in the pulmonary room be just because I am uh, MDRTB. So yeah, uh, I think I, I it's like want to forget that moment when I get pregnant, but yeah, that make me to be like today, just because I don't want any other woman uh, have to feel what I feel when they get the TB and when they are pregnant and they their children and also uh, she can get the better service even though they have TB. Uh, in 2015, uh, my brother get TB sensitive. So at uh, that moment, I taking care of my brother. So it, after he recover, my brother, in 2016, I getting infected again by TB. So yeah, that is my second time experiment with TB, but uh, thanks God is only TB sensitive. But yeah, I have to uh, struggle with my son. My first son, uh, he also get the uh, TB sensitive. So that moment we both uh, struggling again, struggling again to recover from TB, and we finished the treatment in uh, ending end 2016. Uh, it just introduced, yeah, introduced to us in the high level meeting uh, in Indonesia last year. So now. Uh, the Minister of Health focus on uh, the expand the scale up for the uh, contact investigation for the missing person and also for the uh, last to follow up person. We know that uh, sometimes when they get diagnosed, they already uh, found that they are have TB but they didn't come right away to the health facility. There are so many uh, barrier on the, on the people when they get TB. It's like uh, the, the transportation. We know that uh, the health facility for the treatment is put on the main district and they live far away. So they need, uh, transport to go to the health facility. How the government treat COVID is really different with the, how the government treat with TB. So yeah, uh, that is, uh, I think 
one of the barriers. Uh, our government is committed to NTP. The community is in the grassroots level, isn't it? So we know what the barrier, what happened in the grassroots level, what happened in the, uh, we every day dealing with the people with TB, we every day trying to find him, find them and to get them back to here, like, to the health facility. So yeah, definitely I agree. If uh, they can, uh, collaborate with the community. I just want that my family, my life, and also my next generation will free from TB. So they have the right to not uh, infected by TB. So yeah, we have to uh, invest more and also uh, not only infect, but also that we can get access more on diagnostic and also on treatment and also access for uh, TPT and access for uh, short regimen. So sometimes the regimen and the diagnostic and the TPT already uh, available, but we cannot access them. So yeah, the access and also the funding. So welcome friends to another episode of NTB Dialogues 9490 Global Voices series. We uh, began the series at the midpoint of, uh, since the governments around the world adopted the Sustainable Development Goals and NTB target was also one of them. Uh, and the World Health Organization NTB strategy had already, uh, a year before in 2014, had put TB elimination on the map. Uh, so it's over 90 months have passed by since those promises were made uh, less than 90 months are left. But TB rates and the progress towards TB elimination is probably off the mark in many, many places. Most important voices in TB responses are of the affected people. And uh, a lot of, lot of very large uh, part of the humanity is affected by, uh, by TB. Uh, and since years and years, uh, so there is no excuse. It's a human rights imperative to respond uh, to this call to NTB. With this intent, today we have a very special guest today. We have on the panel our, our dear, dear friend, Annie Harnasari. She is the founder of Rekat Paduli Indonesia Foundation, and a, which is a TB survivor organization. So welcome, Annie. Thank yeah, welcome, Bobby. Thank you for inviting me for this meeting. Thank you, Annie. So, uh, Annie, before uh, let's begin with the before you uh, you know got experience with TB. What were you planning to be? The, how did the TB bacteria change change your life? And it could be in any one of us. We uh, so back to, over to you. Yeah, before I got TB, I'm a lecturer in uh, one of the most reputable university. And I just start, uh, uh, it's like about a year. So that moment uh, before I know that I got TB, uh, I have, yeah, it's like uh, my career is just increasing. And uh, when, uh, I got TB, I step up from all from my uh, job because that moment I, I just don't want to anybody get infected by me. Oh, thanks for sharing that, uh, Any, And it's also very humbling to see how the uh, bacteria, which we can't even see from, with our eyes, can change lives. So uh, can you please tell us how did you get diagnosed? How was the experience? Uh, uh, just for, can we understand a bit about that experience and uh, the difficult journey which you had and uh, courageous journey because you not only survived it but also you have risen up to change the response to TB in uh, Indonesia and globally. We're very proud of you. Over to you, Annie. Yeah, thank you so much. So yeah, that moment start in uh, Indonesia uh, just 
uh, start the treatment for MDR-TB in 2009. And I got the MDR-TB in 2011. So yeah, at that moment, the stigma and discrimination still high. Uh, when uh, I, I go to the specialist, uh, it's like shocking because one doctor said that I get uh, allergic on the air. So if I want to uh, get cure, I have to go to the to New Zealand because uh, there the, the air is more fresh. And uh, I go to another doctor again. And the doctor say that I, uh, I already have my x-ray chest and the x-ray say that uh, I will get the TB in the safe, sensitive cases. But when uh, I check my sputum twice, uh, the sputum said that I'm negative. But uh, when I go to the doctor, uh, the doctor said that I get the TB. So yeah, uh, they give me the medicine, the TB medicine, but uh, did not adequate. So they only give me on, uh, one a day. So they, uh, we know that TB medicine have to uh, know that according to the weight, isn't it? So yeah, uh, after two months, I drink the medicine, I cut off blood. So uh, that moment, and uh, the doctor uh, give me injection and then uh, whenever I got blood, the, the doctor gave me injection. So that moment I feel that I drink the medicine, but I did not cure. So yeah, that moment I changed another to another doctor again. And the last doctor uh, gave me advice to uh, check my sputum. And that moment we don't have the gen expert yet. So we have to wait, the result is uh, about three months. So after three months, uh, I got the, the result that I am uh, positive of MDRTB. So yeah, that moment uh, is hard because uh, the treatment is long, two years, and also still have the injection every day. We did not have a day off. And that moment I get the injection for six months. And yeah, it's really painful because uh, the side effect every time I got Nusi for meeting and then pain through my bones. And um, that moment I start treatment in 11 November. 2011 and in February 2012, uh, I found myself pregnant. So yeah, the doctor say that uh, I can't uh, get rid of get rid of uh, my baby because I still on treatment. And uh, another doctor said that I can continue to. Uh, with the baby and I I choose that moment to continue because uh, when we get the what you call uh, the check with the lab uh, the baby is fine so uh, the they change my regimen so I have to get used again to another uh, regimen of MDRTB because uh, uh, before I pregnant, I get the canamycin, and the doctor said that the canamycin for the injection cannot uh, cannot bear with the baby, so they changed my regimen to streptomycin that moment. And uh, a few, I think two of my drug get rid of because uh, where, wherever I uh, swallow is always throw up. So uh, I forgot, I think I, I get uh, 15 pills every day. And because I'm pregnant, I get, they 
key drop of uh, like uh, 609 until I, I deliver nine pill every day with the injection. Yes, for sure that the hard thing because you know the three semester of my pregnancy, everybody uh, get vomiting also. So it's like one package between the three semester of pregnant and also the side effect of medication. So it's like uh, I have to through it until uh, I deliver for eight months because uh, my water broke at that moment. So I have to get the Caesar surgery. And uh, yeah, because, you know, I, I deliver on 2012, September. That moment, uh, the treatment of MDRTB is still not like today. So the stigma and discrimination, even though from the doctor, is still increasing. So when they uh, take me to the what you call surgery room, uh, it's like the doctor is afraid to uh, close with me be just because I'm MDRTB. They did not uh, see my medical record that I already uh converted a negative in the first month i get the treatment and that moment i already uh drink the medicine for the nine maybe ten months so yeah if uh if we know now that tb if you get treated well uh two weeks after you uh treatment it will not infect it to anybody so after that, yeah, they did not uh, put me in the maternal room. They, they put me in the pulmonary room be just because I am uh, MDRTB. So yeah, uh, I think I, I it's like want to forget that moment when I get pregnant. But yeah, that make me to be like today just because I don't want any other woman uh, have to feel what I feel when they get the TB and when they are pregnant and they ch their children and also uh, she can get the better service even though they have TB. What, what a humbling journey, uh, any uh, really so powerful. And uh, thanks a lot for uh, mentioning the gender context. I think it is very important to understand how uh, TB and uh, gender-based inequalities and stereotypes also impact uh, women. So how was your the support? The baby must be 11 years old or 12 years, right? Did you celebrate yes, the birthday? No, just 11. Yes, he just, uh, he just uh, 11 on 10 September. <laughs> <laughs> well, wish him a very, very happy birthday from all yes. of us. Belated, very yes. happy to see this, and especially uh, he has a very uh, brave and courageous mother. <laughs> very happy. Yeah, because uh, he yeah. has to struggling like me. Uh, he had to get the TBT because uh, I still on treatment that moment. See, he got the TBT for uh, almost nine months. And then after that, uh, after the TPT, he got the BCG uh, vaccine. And uh, in 2015, uh, my brother get TB sensitive. So uh, that moment I taking care of my brother. So after he recover, my brother, in 2016, I getting infected again by TB. So yeah, that is my second time experiment with TB, but uh, thanks God is only TB sensitive, but yeah, I have to uh, struggle with my son, my first son, uh, he also get the uh, TB sensitive. So that moment we both uh, struggling then, struggling again to recover from TB. And we finished the treatment in uh, ending end 2016. Wow, it's amazing to hear the struggle. Uh, you know, like uh, 
so 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 amazing so um so how was the experience in terms of uh, like le- let's say diagnosis like you know when you got earlier uh, diagnosed with this putum uh, first it came negative and it was you know the, the it was so difficult we all know that sputum microscopy underperforms science tells us so in terms of diagnosis how was the experience and how did you get diagnosed in 2016 how yeah you- uh, thank you so much it's really different so that is the bit uh progress on it because in 2009 uh in 2011 when i get a treatment yeah i have to uh need more longer so now we can just check it in hours isn't it so yeah i really happy with the progress because uh is uh nobody will feel that the experience like i feel before but the one thing we have to note that Indonesia, I don't know, in India also uh, like that, I don't know, because we know that in, uh, Indonesia is archipelago country. So we have a uh, thousand island. And uh, when people live in the small island and they have to reach the, what you call the, the, the lab, maybe for check, even for, uh the molecular that need only hours it will be still hard for them to reach so yeah now our minister is really uh concerned in, on uh what you call uh, uh like finding missing people and also we know that we have we have the portable uh, X-ray also. Uh, it just introduced, yeah, introduced to us in the high level meeting uh, in Indonesia last year. So now uh, the Minister of Health focus on uh, the expand the scale up for the uh, contact investigation for the missing person and also for the uh, last to follow up person. We know that uh, sometimes when they get diagnosed, they already uh, found that they are have TB, but they didn't come right away to the health facility. There are so many uh, barrier on the, on the people when they get TB. It's like uh, the, the transportation. We know that uh, the health facility for the treatment is put on the main district and they live far away. So they need uh, transport to go to the health facility. And also we have the barrier, uh, the stigma It's like, uh, the disease uh, like decent, so it's not about uh, not because the virus or maybe the battery is just the decent. So they think that uh, they will uh, heal by the time, and also uh, because they are the caregiver. So it's like. Uh, if your parents get a TB and usually you will get TB also and normally you will recover by time. That is uh, the culture also the, the, uh, the how we can change the mindset. So the, the awareness about TB is uh, like also, you know that when we, it really different with COVID, even we have similar symptom on COVID and TB, but how the government treat COVID, it's really different with the, how the government treat with TB. So yeah, uh, that is, uh, I think one of the barrier. Sometimes uh, the people with TB, uh, when they uh, want to come to the health facility, they afraid for being COVID because if they are COVID, they will isolate for the uh, maybe approximately two weeks or more than that. 
or maybe uh, there is an issue that uh, once you get inside the COVID, you will never go out again. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, uh, a view of the barrier in Indonesia. We, uh, I don't know how many, how long that we want uh, that uh, to be happen, even though uh, I hear that uh, that already raised in the couple of, uh, I think, last year, isn't it? So uh, we have to know like Indonesia is before that we know that we are on the, in the low middle income country. So now I heard that Indonesia already on middle income country. So when we are in the low uh, middle in income country, you know that the support from the global fund is not like before. So they they uh, what you call they reduce the support. Uh, they didn't think that we still need that support, even the uh, you. Until now, the Global Fund is the highest uh, funding for uh, support for TB, HIV, and also malaria. And our ministry concerned about this. And also uh, in the two, 2024, he uh, promised to scale up the to expand the x-ray and also the what you call uh the the genesport uh genesport isn't it uh, for the fastest uh test uh that already mentioned even though uh we already have broad and in surabaya for the gen expert not the newest the newest one, but still in the six countries. But now we will uh, more expand to the, I, I don't know, if I'm not forget, it will be uh, 10 countries uh, with the gray, because uh, when I get the training, they uh, different the, the machine with the blue one and the gray one. So the gray one is the newest and it will be the fastest. And it, it can uh, check also for the pre-HDR, uh, yeah, pre-HDR, and not also uh, not for only MDR. But yeah, still need time and then the allocation for the money, because we know we not uh, only focus on diagnostic, we have to focus on the TPT because our, uh, what you call, uh, our is really lower on the TPT. And also we just uh, expand the BPAL and BPAL M. Uh, last year, we we just uh, doing the operational research and so many things. And you know, that is need a lot of cost. And sometimes uh, I know the government thing that where have to be prioritized first. Because yeah, we have to uh, follow the short regimen and also, also follow the how to prevent the, the the TB, and also we have to know that the people with TB have to get the fastest diagnostic. So yeah, it's it's all about the money and how they can spare for it. But our com uh, our government is commit to NTP. The community is in the grassroots level, isn't it? So we know what the barrier, what happened in the grassroots level, what happened in the, uh, we every day dealing with the people with TB, we every day trying to find him, find them and to get them back to here, like to the health facility. So yeah, definitely I agree. If uh, they can, uh, collaborate with the community. But sometimes uh, uh, it's like in Indonesia, we are, the community have the lack of uh, experience. And sometimes we, uh, 
it's only uh, a few of us in the in Indonesia that in the survivor community can speak English. So that's one of the barrier as of as a community to scale up our uh, capacity. So everything is already uh, yeah in English, isn't it? So the practice and also the module and only a few that the module can translate to in, uh, in Indonesia in Bahasa. But yeah, uh, when we get the chance to make the translation, we already share to the community. But once again, sometimes uh, the, our capacity need to increase to meet that need. Yeah, agree totally. So, uh, so Ani, can we ask you please if you may share? Um, you know, millions of people thankfully get cured of TB now because of good medicines, and very proud that in Indonesia, BPAL, BPLM, BPLL um, is being uh, rolled out, which is very important. Let us hope that you also get shorter TPT regimen yeah. one month. Your son got nine months, right? Like, let us hope you have a better regimen soon becomes a reality. Yeah. So, uh, but you also got cured of TV, but you you chose to establish found Rikit uh, Peduli Foundation. Uh, what what was the drive? What, what happened? You had a um, very prestigious job in such a reputed university before yeah. the bacteria. Yeah. So, uh, what what drove you? What motivated you to uh, to devote your life to this cause? Can if you don't mind, can you please will you please share with us? Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I like to teach and I like to sharing because I have background as a lecturer. So uh, what um, experienced me and attract me as a mother, my experience and also my children's experience can be a, a model, a role model that uh, we are survive from TV. And until now, we can be uh, useful for everybody. And also, uh, we can sharing our uh, experience, how we can survive from TB, and then how we can uh, say to the stakeholder, to the donor, that we still need to invest to NTB. And we can say that we are the we are live by experience. So we get TB, and now we still want that TB can get rid of from uh, the world. And I want that uh, my next generation can free from TB. So yeah, that is like they dreaming that TV can ending in 2013. We, we, can, we don't wait for 2015 because uh, we know that uh, 2013 is eliminating TV, not ending TV. It will be different, but maybe we can dream that TV will be ending in 2013. So yeah, if not me, Maybe not you, not uh, my friend, not Rakat, or not Global Fund, or not anybody that focus on TB. Who else that will uh, want to concern? So maybe I'm just a piece, but I think yeah, I can be useful for my community. Yes, of course you are, and you are our role model too. You are our hero too, uh, Eddie. Thank you. For the thank you for leading from the front and uh, and being such a powerful force for change. So uh, so any uh, as you know the UN high level meeting on TB is happening soon. So uh, what is your call to the to the leaders? Now it is time for you to lecture the global leaders. <laughs> I just want that my family, my life, 
and also my next generation will free from TB. So they have the right to not uh, infected by TB. So yeah, we have to uh, invest more and also uh, not only infect, but also that we can get access more on diagnostic and also on treatment and also access for uh, TPT and access for uh, short regimen. So sometimes the regimen and the diagnostic and the TPT already uh, available, but we cannot access them. So yeah, the access and also the funding. Yes. Yes, yes, totally. We also echo all the demands which you have made. It is so important to fully invest in TB. Power to Rikat uh, Peduli. You are our hero for sure. You really inspired us. And let us hope that this, this you know, your voice for change uh, really um, has an impact and, and things um, accelerate towards ending TB. So with all the best again, Any thanks a lot for speaking with us. Very, very grateful. And uh, uh, power to you and Rikat. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me also. Welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.